So there's an ongoing phenomenon that happens every day, and that phenomenon is never feeling like you have enough money. It's that feeling you get whether you make good money or not. It's when you get paid after a long two weeks, and the next thing you know, it's almost completely gone, and now you have to wait yet another two weeks. It feels like no matter what you do or how careful you are, the money just always leaves you. And if that's you, I can 100% relate. And I've also got good news for you, because this video is going to do much more than highlight the issue. It's also gonna give you solutions that you probably haven't thought of, and you can apply everything I'm about to tell you immediately. Let's get into this. There's three main reasons why people feel like they never have enough money. And first up, we have lack of planning. Now that's not to say that there's zero planning at all, but what I am saying is that there's not enough planning, which means you most likely just need to tighten up your financial planning. Tighten up? You can do all the basics, you can plan out all of your necessities rent, utilities, car insurance, gas, groceries, and you can look at how much all that costs you every month. And you can have an exact idea of how much all that'll cost and how much money you'll have left over and still feel like you don't have enough money at the end of the month. Wondering why even though you're doing everything right, you still can't get ahead. And the answer is actually pretty simple. You're probably doing exactly what I was guilty of doing and you're not thinking far ahead enough. When I used to make my budgets, I would always forget to write down certain expenses or I would just tell myself, hey, that's a low expense, so don't even worry about writing that down. But you'd be surprised at how much all those little expenses add up at the end of the month and just sneak up on you. So there's a good chance you're forgetting about the cost of all of your bills, even your nine necessities. Your subscriptions, like for example, I used to never include my Audible account within my budget. Then at the end of the month, I'd be like, where'd my $15 go? Of course, there's also stuff like streaming services and other small expenses that just add up. But the biggest problem with planning is that most of the time, we're limited to only planning for what we can see coming. Because we see the exact same bills coming every month, but it's the expenses that happen less often that get us. Every year, you have to get an oil change on your car. Every few years, you're going to need to get new tires for your car. Every year, we have tax season. At some point throughout the year, you're going to need to pay for new tags for your car. And usually two times a year, your gym membership is going to charge you a few extra dollars for maintenance fees. You know these things are going to happen. But I guarantee you, most people don't think about these things until they happen. There's birthdays every year, anniversaries, holidays like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, there's family gatherings. Every so often you might have a friend or family member that gets married and you'll know about these things way ahead of time, but there's no preparation. And because there's no preparation, you find yourself shelling out more money than you plan to. And you might have the money to do so, but once you check your phone and you look at your bank account, you think there's $200 left, but to your surprise, you're sitting there with your lip poked out, $2, what? Looking at your phone like it's crazy, like it's lying to you or something. Yeah, $2, you're lucky that's in there. You don't remember all that stuff you bought a few weeks ago? Oh, nah, don't get upset now. Be prepared, man. Now, the second reason is the most important one in my opinion, and I think this will really run deep and resonate with you. Obligation. Obligation is 100% the biggest reason why a lot of us never feel like we have enough money. There was even a video posted on Facebook a while ago, man. It was one of those videos with little captions at the bottom, and the caption said, oh, you got this good paying job, but you never have money left over. What's up with that? So the guy who made the video proceeded to show everyone why his bank account didn't have much money in it at the end of the month. First showed him in his car as he was leaving work and then he was heading to the gas station. Then the camera focused in on his fuel gauge, which was full by the way, and then he did like this. Then he did that a few more times. He got home, showed everybody his apartment door, and then he went inside and showed everybody his refrigerator, which was overwhelmingly full by the way. I mean, bro, I had juice snacks, water, soda, and on top of that, he had food for days. I was low-key jealous of what he had in his refrigerator. I ain't gonna lie to you, but then, you know, he did this. Then he messed around and took us to a journey to his pantry, which was super full, looked like a mini supermarket up in there. Then he gave us a complete house tour, showed all the rooms, all the furniture, and everything. Then this dude ran to the sink real quick and turned the water on. Then he turned his lights on and off real quick to show everybody he had his lights on. Only he wasn't giving the hand gestures I was just showing you. He was actually flipping the camera off, but we keep it PG over here. And even though I put this in joke form, this actually highlights a very serious issue. And I want to speak on it real quick because a lot of people beat themselves up over this. 
we're all adults who have responsibilities and obligations, whether you have kids or you have a family member to take care of, or even if it's your only responsibility to take care of yourself, provide, keep a roof over your head, and make sure you have food and water. All of those are obligations. So before I get into this a little more, I want to say this. Never let the fact that you have obligations bother you so much that you start to feel bad about them to the point where you actually start to blame your obligations for the reason that you feel like you never have enough money. Because you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do as a man or as a woman. You're doing what you have to do to make stuff happen. And I'm telling you what you already know by outlining the problems, but I promise you they come with solutions. So I'm going to show you how to start improving your situation and how you can eventually get rid of your problems altogether one by one. A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck right now, and a lot of it is because of their obligations. Maybe you're married, maybe you have kids, maybe you're not married, maybe you don't have kids. I don't know your story, but I'd love to hear about it in the comments. But anyways, I can tell you from experience, even me being single with no kids and having high paying jobs my entire career. I felt like I never had enough money at the beginning of my financial journey, and that's because I was being responsible. I had obligations, and my obligations to myself was paying my bills on time and saving as much money as I possibly could. So I had to have that discipline. I couldn't touch that money that I had in my savings. I had debt to pay off. I had a credit card score to build. Any money I had outside of that went straight towards investments. I was obligating myself to my future. For you, it might look completely different. That's just what it looked like for me. But for you, your money could be going towards your kid's future, medical expenses, or even just living and staying above water. And even though some of our obligations come from our mistakes, like getting an overly expensive apartment or going into six figures of student loan debt, we have to accept these as our obligations and learn from them and improve ourselves going forward so we make sure that this doesn't happen again. I'd rather you do that instead of beating yourself up about it, feeling sorry for yourself, or even blaming others for your problems. Remember, you're doing what you need to do right now to make things happen. The only thing you can do in this situation is to save up as much money as you can, lower as much of your expenses as possible, and figure out a way to make more money. Whether that's going for a promotion at work, asking for a raise, or making money on the side. I've personally done all three of those and I've even made videos on how I did them so definitely check those out. I made this playlist right here that goes in depth on all of those. And no matter which method you choose to improve your situation, there's always a solution and there's always a way out. So if you're sitting at home right now watching this video and your obligations feel like a ton of weights on your shoulders, just remember, since you're already strong enough to fulfill your obligations despite whatever adversity or challenges you're going through, you're definitely strong enough to change your financial situation for the better, permanently. You'd be surprised at what small tweaks you can make right now that can change your financial future forever. And you'd be even more surprised at the small habits you're doing right now that can actually keep your money stagnant for years. Which leads us to the most common reason why a lot of us feel like we never have enough money. Overspending. This kind of goes hand in hand with the planning that I was talking to you about earlier. Only the overspending takes the lack of planning and takes it to a whole other level. So we've already addressed that we can forget about birthdays, holidays, weddings, car maintenance, all of that good stuff. You might even forget to plan for dates, going out with friends, going out to the movies. These are all basic mistakes that we all make sometimes, right? But when I talk about the habit of overspending, I'm talking about spending mindlessly. For example, you might find yourself buying shoes you didn't plan to buy or going out to the food court every single time you go to the mall. And the stuff people buy whenever they overspend, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything expensive. It could be stuff like skincare products, makeup, cleaning products, you know what I'm saying, fast food. It could be any random thing. And I've had tons of conversations with people about this stuff specifically. And whenever I ask them why they think they have this problem, they always tell me, I don't really know. Like, you know, I just do it and I can't stop doing it. It's like an impulsive buying type of thing. And this is no judgment or anything. That's actually the first step to fixing this problem. Understanding that you do, in fact, have a problem. My name is Reggie Bryant, and I have an overspending problem. Hi, Hi Reggie. Reggie. Every time I go downtown, I find myself going to Chick-fil-A, getting one of them spicy chicken sandwiches with large fries on the side. Y'all better listen to them. It's just something about downtown that makes me think about that crispy chicken with that spicy spice, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's so spicy, I gotta get myself two drinks every time I go there. And by two drinks, I mean a soda and a milkshake. Mm. Lord help them. Then you know what I get? What you get, man? A 
chocolate chip cookie. Because Chick-fil-A has some banging chocolate chip cookies. They do be banging. I'm them. telling you right now, if you haven't tried them, you should. Those cookies are about delightful. He ain't lying to you, man. Now. And I'm not proud of it, but it sets me back about $20 every time I go over there. But it's so good, though. Know what I'm saying? Gotta have that spicy spice. Y'all know what else I it do? It is good, though, low-key. Every time I'm alone on a Friday night, I mess around and order myself a large pepperoni pizza all to myself. Thin crust with an overpriced two liter Coke on the side. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We know what you're talking about now. Yes. Go on ahead. Now. You know what I'm talking about. So when you know you have those habits and you know exactly what circumstances cause you to spend money, you can start to dial those back a little bit. Knowing that every time you go downtown, you just have to pick up some fast food. Stop going downtown so much then. Slow down some. What you going downtown so much for anyway? Come, what? What's going on downtown, man? <laughs> and if you know it's something about Friday nights that possesses you to order a whole pizza to eat by yourself, you can start to dial that back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe once or twice a month, not every dag on Friday. Instead, you could be hitting up the gym and come back home to a warm plate of chicken and rice, nice and healthy, with ice cold water on the side. And for dessert, a protein shake. Then you know what you do? Relax, chill out. Do that till the itis sets in and then guess what? You sleep. That's way more productive than it is to eat pizza all night. Plus it's healthier too. Trying to look out for you, man. I, you know what I'm saying? Can't have you struggling out there like that. Even though I say this as a joke, it's a real issue and it's something that a lot of people struggle with. And another reason people struggle with overspending is because it's easy to look at what other people have and then look at yourself and feel like what you have isn't enough. Therefore, making it look like someone else has it easier than you, like an easier life than you. This comes from the overwhelming pressure that society puts on us to have things and keep up appearances without any regard for what's left in your pockets afterward. You know what I'm saying? When you see somebody with the fresh name brand clothes on, got a brand new car, they just made renovations to their house and it really looks like they have it all together. And then you look at yourself and you look at your possessions and then you start to feel inadequate. Because you don't feel like you're at the same level as the next guy or girl. But you don't know what their pockets look like. It's very easy to assume that someone has money just because they have a North Face jacket on or some Yeezys on their feet. Then it gets to the point where you're like, man, I don't have the money to go out and do stuff like that. And you know, sometimes the people that you see with nice things actually do have the means to do so and they have plenty of money left over and that's great. But there's also people who look like they're making it, but they're really not. And they're really just fooling everyone, including themselves, but they really don't have the money left over. And that's no judgment on them. But either way, the perception is the person with nice things has money. And what happens a lot of times is instead of striving to improve yourself to get to where that person's at, what happens a lot of times is we decide to become victims of our situation and we just refuse to change it at all. It's literally when you hate on someone else so bad that you actually hurt yourself. You know what I'm saying? This person's winning, this person's winning, this person's winning. Why am I not winning? You know what? I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to let my situation get worse. Like literally that's what happens. Which ironically causes them to overspend and sink deeper and deeper because they're spending money on things that they don't need and they honestly can't afford. Swiping more credit cards, getting deeper into debt, and they sink and sink and sink until they hit the bottom. You don't got to be like that, bro. We can all win the right way. And I'll tell you this, you don't have to wait till you hit the bottom. If you feel like you never have enough money, you can start taking the steps right now to get above water and stay above water until you eventually get to the point where you can just relax and breathe. Always remember, never tie your worth to the amount of money you're making or how much money you have left over at the end of the month. Just know that if you want to change your situation, you're going to have to recognize your mistakes. You're also going to need to dial back your spending and you might even need to figure out another way to make more money because having more than one stream of income is very important, especially in today's time. That's how you're going to get the results that you want. Don't think of this as a sacrifice. Think of this as an obligation to yourself so you can have the financial future you've always dreamed of. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. I will see you in the next one. Stay cold.